Hi guys, welcome to my coffee show. My name is Jack and I just realized that by the time you see this video, this channel will be one year old. So uh, thank you, thank you very much for all of, all of you who uh, watch my videos, especially for those who subscribed. It helps me a lot. Uh, and those who, who haven't subscribed, well, if you click that button now, I will forgive you. We started this channel with an uh, unboxing of a, a Creme One a profiler. Since then, I, I managed to lose few machines. I get few new, new equipments. And we kind of keep well, comparing uh, brewing methods, uh, grinders and so on. Uh, so today we go into uh, compare two grinders. We will play with my uh, Solo DF64 with SSP multi-purpose burrs. And I will put it against a hand grinder that supposedly is designed to grind mostly for espresso. And that will be uh, uh, one Z Easy Presso J Max, made mostly with aluminium, uh, stainless steel, uh, plastic lid here, wooden knob, magnetically attached cup. The color of the grinder, as you can see, is kind of a metallic shade. I think there are a few different shades, but in, the, in the, they are all in the same uh, style. To change the settings, you use that uh, outer ring here so it's very easy that's why i love this grinder very easy to change the settings and yes you do the multiple rotations so there are numbers uh, uh, around from zero till eight you can do up to five uh, full rotations so that gives you 450 uh, settings uh, for the espresso i'm usually on a one full rotation and half up to two full rotations uh, and you know which rotation you are on because you have those dots, those tiny, like a pyramid of, of dots here. So if you change the rotations, you either cover on or uncover uh, one uh, row of dots. 8.8 .8 microns difference, size difference in between each click. It is a stepped grinder, but with such a small difference between each click, you can really dial in for espresso. The burrs inside are uh, 48 millimeters conical burrs. Uh, and I don't know why, what they did, but this grinder grinds really fast. The, the only issue is that, with, especially with the light roast, you need to use some force to, to, to have an espresso before you use this grinder on a light, light roast coffee. Another issue, and that's, uh, we, we, we talked, we compared this with the K-Max. Uh, J-Max, if you can see, uh, it's slightly thicker. I put that rubber band that is included with the, with the grinder uh, to help with the grip but it is rather thick for my small palms. So again, if you grind uh, light, especially light roast, uh, it, it sometimes it's dif more difficult to hold the, the grip. DF64, uh, well, obviously that's an electric grinder. Uh, so there is an engine, the grinder is much bigger, around seven-ish kg. In these versions, the verse are uh, SSP multi-purpose burrs. Uh, originally it came with uh, Ita Mills burrs, so they are flat, the 64 obviously millimeters burrs. Engine power, it's about 250 watts and it goes up to 1400 RPMs versus I don't know how many RPMs I can do with my hand grinder. I bought a few uh, modifications, so I uh, but the modification that brings the catching cap closer to the funnel. I've got a grind indicator and inside I put an anti-popcorning like a slow feeder. There are newer versions now of this grinder and they addressed some of the issues. So possibly you won't need all those modifications. Both uh, J-Max and uh, DF64 are near zero retention grinders. The hand grinders are usually pretty much zero retention. This one sometimes can hold a little bit and that's why you have a blower on top. 
DF64 you can get pretty much any color you like so there are so many to choose from both uh, DF64 especially with those bursts and uh, J Max they tend to uh, increase the clarity of the shots so it will be a good thing to put them against each other and we will also do the pour over test so we'll, by the end of this video we will know which grinder is better coffee we have to use some coffee and I have a special coffee for the special video uh, and uh, special viewers special coffee the caravan coffee uh, a roaster this coffee is a coffee from Ethiopia the name of which I pronounce Buku Saisa, but I might be wrong. What's special about this coffee? The processing. It's a natural, uh, anaerobic coffee. What it means? The coffee cherries, and uh, I'm 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 using the info that the producer gave me. Uh, the cherries they only choose the ripest cherries, the best they can find. They hand sort them, then they put those perfect cherries into the barrels. Uh, lock them so there is no access of the air for about 18 till 24 hours so that starts this anaerobic fermentation then they take it out uh, and they leave it outside uh, with the cherries on top for about two three weeks the notes that we are promised here are a key lime a strawberry and a candy floss the producer recommends a higher ratio here 18 grams in 44 48 grams of coffee out that's what we're going to use profile i will use today very simple they call it a uh, uh, best overall uh, pressure profile uh, so there will be a pre-infusion uh, up to about four bars then the pressure will go up to slightly below nine and then there will be decline of the pressure i in I increase the water temperature to 90 then normally it goes with 88 that should help with the extraction so that's a kind of a lighter roast coffee time of the extraction we will see definitely more than uh, 30 seconds less than 40 so maybe 35 we will see what I can get so the question the question often people ask how long it takes especially with the hand grinder how long it takes to grind 18 grams of coffee well we will see now well, I will start with the setting 1.8 and as you can see, it's especially the first shot, uh, it's not easy. If I'm not the strongest person, and, uh, but I'm, I wouldn't call myself weak and you know, and I struggle with that. Okay, it took less than 40 seconds, uh, 37 uh, 40 seconds. I can feel my tendonitis in the elbow. Uh, my thumb uh, aches for just from holding the grinder. DF64 will make more noise, obviously, but it will also grind faster. Remember, I have that slow feeder installed, so it, it does slow down the time a little bit. So here I will start with the setting number 10. Okay, 25 seconds it took. You can also use that bellow. Personally, just because of that time and effort, I would never choose a hand grinder as my daily driver. But tell me about you. Is there anybody there who drinks a decent quantity of uh, coffees uh, and it still uses the, the hand grinder? If so, let me know. And uh, which hand grinder do you use? And how big your arms are? I will start with the J Max. Why? Um, because whatever time I get from J Max, I will try to match with the DF64. It will be easier this way than the other way around. We have a shot. It didn't look great, but this coffee won't look great. But I'm surprised there is a crema. And there is a nice amount of crema here. I'm so lucky, honestly, that was my first shot. So let's check the smell first. Sweetness, tea, but kind of like a, an iced tea with peaches or something, something like a sweet. Okay, cheers. Definitely lime. There is a bitterness, the minimal sweetness. Strawberries, maybe, but the, the strawberries that are not ready yet, kind of on the green side. Not too much body, obviously that's a, that's a long shot. It's a drinkable, enjoyable shot. 
maybe I was hoping for more of a, like a wow factor. Let's see what the refractometer says. 7.31 uh, TDS, about 20% extraction. Now let's test the DF64. Crema, uh, also nice, but slightly less thick here. I pulled two previous shots and the crema in each of those shots was a bit worse than the crema from uh, J Max. Whatever it means, uh, that, was the, that was the difference. Smell uh, the same kind of aroma, but less sweetness here. Like, again, the same tea, but without that, that much sugar. <laughs> Cheers. Hey, there is a difference. There is a difference. The tasting notes are very similar, so I can taste the, the key that that lime is a key lime. What's the difference between key lime and the normal lime? I don't know, but I can taste that limey sourness. In the J Max, the tastes were kind of sharp, almost to the point of unpleasantness. Not over that point, but almost to the point of uh, unpleasantness. Here, in this shot, uh, with SSP multi-purpose burrs, the, the, the flavor notes are nicer, kind of a smoother. There is, there, there is a sourness, there is a little bit bitterness, by the way, much less uh, than uh, on, the, on the J Max. I can taste more sweetness, but strawberries, I mean, in both of those uh, shots, I would have to really struggle to look for strawberries, but it would be slightly easier to find them on uh, this shot than the previous one. There's kind of more harmony in this, in this uh, shot. Possibly, possibly there was a little bit more body from the shot with the uh, J Max than here. Again, not a huge difference. This shot slightly thinner, but everything else, it's nicer. So uh, I would say if I had to choose just purely on the, those two shots, I would choose uh, the, the shot from the DF64. You may ask, what about the clarity? You mentioned clarity, there is a clarity, clarity. We want clarity, we're obsessed with clarity. Um, there is a clarity in both. It's just that, how do you define clarity? Do you like, is clarity the only factor that you really, really enjoy in espresso? Because clarity means, or it can mean that both good and bad flavors are very noticeable. And if that's your clarity, possibly the J Max would have it would have it more. Here you also have very detectable notes, but they are nicer. Okay, there is no harshness, nothing like slaps you in the face. Okay, everything combines together in the nice flavor. So that's 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 the difference here. Let's see what the refractometer says. 7.44, the same ratio here, and we've got tad more. Ex uh, extraction so that was below 20 in the first shot here we've got slightly over so this that's within the margin of error so so far one zero for df64 with uh, ssp multi-purpose burst now is the time for a pour over test i will be using classic uh, v60 that's a size 2 v60 and my recipe 15 grams of coffee uh, 1 to 15 ratio, so 225 uh, grams of, of water all together. Water temperature 98 degrees through the entire process. Uh, 45 grams of water for the blooming phase and I will leave it for two minutes and then I will uh, pour the remaining 180 grams of water starting with the stream high then I will bring it a bit closer, I will agitate, or I will do all of that. Uh, and then we will brew and we will compare. Hopefully the, the time of extraction of, on those two uh, cups will be uh, similar. That's what I will be aiming for. On the J Max, I will start with the setting 2.7, so two full rotations and seven, because everybody recommends that. On a, a DF64, 24. That's the coffee bed from J Max. Uh, not sure if you can notice, but lots of unevenness. So a little bit of the muddy things, but those bigger chunks here and there, something I don't like. It took good minute and a half to extract. For the moment, I thought uh, it will 
it clogged the filter but somehow it went down that's the df 64 ssp burst uh, again i'm not saying that's the best coffee bed uh, i've ever produced but at least it's even slightly on the muddier side i probably should grind a bit coarser this one took uh, 15 seconds longer to extract than the j max uh, by the way it took only 16 seconds to to grind uh, 15 grams of coffee on the setting 2.7 on the j uh, max and it took 12 seconds to grind uh, uh, that 15 grams on the df64 with the slow feeder floral maybe hints of chocolate at the background but mostly like a floral floral smell kind of a typical uh, smell you get from the um, pour over from ethiopian coffee cheers well balanced chocolate little bit of um, sourness nothing extraordinary but overall i like this cup it's, it tastes nice a little bit of lime little bit of chocolate little bit of something baked not too bitter not too sour not too sweet everything kind of average okay so we have 1.39 tds that gives us uh, well almost 18 percent extractions one thing that i haven't mentioned there was also nice kind of a nice body to the uh, pour over some people hate the body in a pour over i kind of enjoyed in this one almost uh, some fruitiness i wish it was strawberries maybe i can call it a strawberries i'm not sure but some sort of nice fruitiness in a smell so that's a good sign cheers less body which is strange because there was a kind of a muddy cup Again, there is a nice balance, sourness, sourness slightly increased um, here, not, not much, but slightly. With that body in the first cup, it was that kind of nice silkiness that I enjoyed a bit more. Here, I've got more clarity and uh, uh, that's, that's visible. The clarity is here, so I can look for more of the nuances. Both of those two cups are good, but they are different. If you if you take my meaning, uh, J Max is more like an ordinary good coffee. Um, DF sixty four it's a it's a good coffee for someone chasing for those uh, elusive uh, flavor notes. One point three TDS so looks like slightly lower, but the the dosage was slightly slightly different. Seventeen point twenty two extraction uh, percentage extraction. Kind of similar cups when you ask the refractometer. Guys, if you are still here, that means you love the channel. So click like and subscribe if you haven't. Uh, my final conclusions. First, the espresso shots. Um, both shots were good. Both shots uh, gave me a good clarity. Uh, I got a little bit more body from the J Max. I enjoyed the shot from DF64 with SSP multi-purpose burst a bit more. The cups of the pour over, that was a big surprise. Honestly, I was expecting DF64 to be hands down much better. And the first sips, the J Max was wow, it was, it was, it was decent. It was decent, it was uh, pleasant. But what was missing was all the nuances that I kind of got, I'm not saying that the, 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 the cup from the DF64 was perfect. It was kind of more towards that road of discovery of different flavor notes, rather than just presenting a nice cup of coffee. The J Max cup got more of that body, which, which was probably why I enjoyed it. Difficult here to de declare which one is a pour over winner, because that depends on your preferences. Uh, I have to say I enjoy J Max the cup even more, even though it was ordinary. Maybe I'm an ordinary man, I don't know. I, but I can see a huge potential, huge potential with the DF64 with SSP Burst. One thing that we have to put into, into the equation is the price. And the price of J Max, it's probably three or, or even four times less than the price of the uh, DF64 with SSP Burst. And DF64 wasn't four times, the shot wasn't three or four times better. It was slightly better for the espresso and different uh, with the, for the pour over. So if you want to save yourself money, you may, you may go for this one. 
Uh, if you have any of those grinders, let me know in the comments how do you like them uh, for espresso and for the pour over. I'm especially looking for people who really enjoy the J Max for the pour over or really enjoy uh, DF64 with SSP multi-purpose bars for the pour over. If you have both and if you have if you had chance to compare them, let me know about your results. But for today, thank you very much for watching. My name is Jack. This is my coffee show and hopefully I will see you soon. Thank you. Bye.